You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Lifeline broadcast, hosted by Apostle Shirley Jones. She is the senior pastor of Rehoboth Family Life Center, and we are located at 17900 Queen Anne Road, Upper Marlboro, Maryland, 20774. Service on Sunday is at 10 a.m., and we would be honored to have you come out to worship and fellowship with us. We are indeed being blessed by the Lord every Sunday. We have Bible study via teleconference every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. The dial-in number is 712-432-3100. The access code is 386-279. Our men's Bible study is held the first Saturday of each month at 9.30 a.m. Women's Bible study is also held the first Saturday of each month beginning at 10 a.m. Marriage Ministry Bible Study is held the fourth Saturday of each month, also at 10 a.m. Apostle Jones' book, Lifeline, When God Speaks, Volumes 1 and 2, can be purchased at Barnes & Noble, Amazon, and any place books are sold. You can also send your request to www.shirleyjjones.com. To purchase the books along with a worship CD birth during her time, sitting before the Lord. Lifeline, When God Speaks, is a book of encouraging words that God gave for her life, and now she shares to encourage you in your journey. So be sure to get a copy. Apostle Jones can be reached via email at apostlesjones at rehobothflc.org or by phone at 1-877-354-6082. She would love to hear from you. Remember, the broadcast is the first Monday of each month. Get the word out now to Lifeline Broadcast with Apostle Shirley Jones. Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining me tonight for the Lifeline Broadcast. To God be all the glory. As always tonight, I'd like to give thanks to the visionary and administrator, of When Christians Speak Talk Radio Show, Reverend Ray Rose and Reverend Pat Randall, for such a wonderful platform that the very simplicity of the gospel goes forth that allows people's lives to be changed throughout the world. And so to God be the glory for them and all that the broadcast is doing. Uh, before we get into the message for tonight, I have uh, I just want to make two announcements. Um, we are at Rehoboth. We are canceling our Bible studies uh, for the summer, because I know a lot of people are out of vacationing and just spending time with their family. And so there won't be any women's Bible study, men's Bible study, or the marriage ministries will not be meeting until uh, again in September. So for those of you that might have been coming out or wanted to come out, we are suspending those Bible studies until uh, after Labor Day. We'll be picking up again. Uh, my second announcement before I go into the word tonight is my uh, newest work. ABCs of Leadership has been released. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm just so excited about that. I've had the opportunity to do the initial book signing uh, that I mentioned. I think I was on the air last time that we were going to be having it, and we did. It was it was wonderful. A lot of people came out to support, and I, I thank God for that. Uh, but it gives life, ABCs of Leadership, it gives the principles in leading God's way. And uh, this book can be purchased from... Barnes and Nobles, it can be purchased from Amazon or anywhere books are sold. You can also uh, go to my website, www.shirleyjjones.com, and make your purchase of ABC Leadership. Also, you can also purchase Lifeline Volume 1 and 2 along with the Worship CD. And I just want to say thank you for those of you that have already grabbed your, your copies of the books and for those that have not. Please do. I just believe that you'll be blessed. It has been divinely downloaded 
uh, from God to show us how to to lead God's way. So um, get your get your copy and be blessed. Be blessed. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open us up in prayer, and then we're going to go ahead and get into the word for tonight. So Father, I just thank you tonight. And I just bless you, Lord, and I just honor you, God, and give you praise and give you thanksgiving and give you glory. God, we thank you for your loving kindness, oh, God, and your tender mercies. God, we thank you that, God, that how you kept us all day and you didn't allow any danger to befall us, Lord God, and and you walked with us and you allowed us to know that we belong to you. So I pray, Father God, blessings upon each person that's on the broadcast tonight. I pray blessings upon their family. I pray that they, too, will understand and know that you love them with an everlasting love that, and nothing is too hard for you to do. So I pray tonight, Lord God, that you would be glorified and that your people, God, will be blessed. So I just yield myself tonight as your servant leader tonight. I pray that, Father, that you would speak through these lips. And, I, Father God, I just surrender anew and afresh to you even tonight. Father, you said that if I would open my mouth, that, Father, that you would fill it. If I present myself to you, that, Father, God, that you would use me in the latter day. So I pray tonight, God, that you be glorified on this line. I pray that your people will be blessed and that, Father, God, that you will get the glory and the honor and the praise that's due to you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Amen. As always, I tell you guys I am a preacher, but I'm also a teacher. So tonight I ask that you would just grab your Bibles tonight and and let's get into the Word and allow God to encourage us through his very Word. I want to give us a title tonight for the teaching. It's it's going to be He Careth. He Careth. And when you think about it, from time to time, there, there are things that occur in our life that we cannot really get past. You know, those things that just kind of make you kind of pause or pull up. Uh, it could be a loss of that job where we see ourselves being promoted. It could be a loss of that relationship that we just knew marriage was the end result. It could be friends that, that does us wrong. It could be a tragedy that hits a family member and they pass suddenly. It could be sickness that hits our body, and there, there are still a lot of lists of possible life events that can occur. But then there are even those small things, you know, those small things that can happen during the day that puts a damper on our day. For instance, like parking, the parking lot is full, and you have to park blocks away from where you want to go. You're outside of your car, and you can't find the keys that you just had, and you realize that they are locked in the trunk where you laid them down. The door to the back of your deck is locked, (laughs) and there are no steps and you cannot get back inside the house, and you just put some oatmeal in the microwave, and the microwave is broke and will not start. You know, then there are times when we do not know where we fit. We realize that there has been a shift in our lives, but we do not understand to where it has shifted to. We don't feel like we have anything worth offering to anyone or anything. We're not knowing our purpose in life and just feeling less. Well, these situations really get our attention, and sometimes it's hard to get back into the flow of our day or our lives. But God, hallelujah, hallelujah, no, none of those situations that I just mentioned and the ones that I didn't mention are greater than the God that we serve, that God cannot help us through that. And we have to, he wants us to know tonight that, that he cares about everything that becomes a concern for us. He wants to be God in every aspect of our lives. And he really needs us to realize that that's what he wants to be in our lives. Isn't that awesome? That God cares about everything that we care about. So there is no situation that we encounter that is bigger than the God that we serve and that God doesn't want to be a part of it. So what do we do? We're going to talk about that tonight. Let's kick this around a little bit tonight. So what do we do when there are challenges, big and small? Well, First Peter 5, 7 says, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. And in the Amplified Version, it reads, casting all your cares, all your anxieties, <clears throat> excuse me, all your worries and all your concerns, once and for all on him. For he cares about you with deepest affection, and he watches over you very carefully. Isn't that awesome? 
that 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 he cares about everything, our anxieties, our worries, our concerns. And he says, once and for all, can we just give those things over to him and that he can take care of them because he cares about us with the deepest affection and he watches over us very carefully. He knows everything about us. He knows the things that we're that we're going to be be encountered through the day and, and, and he's mindful of those things. And when I look at the word cast, it means to to throw or to hurl, to to fling, to throw off or away, to cost, to fall upon something as in a certain direction. It means to send forth, to part with, to loose, to shred, or to drop, to throw or to set, to set aside, to discard or reject or dismiss. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and I, I did this message at church, and I, I'm a visual person, so I had – I had this wrap that I had around my shoulders. And when you think about, I use it as an illustration that uh, the wrap represents things that, that hold us back, that keep us hindered. And he says to hurl those things, to cast those things, to throw those things. And I took off the wrap off my shoulders, and I, I just threw it across the room. And I said, and that's what God wants us to do. He says, this, you don't have to carry those things, those things that make you worry, those things that give you anxiety, those things that you don't have any answers for, those things that you don't have the power to do anything about, those things that, that you just don't know what to do. He says, give them to me. Cast those upon me. Dismiss them. Don't carry them. Give them to me. And so that's what we're going to talk a little bit about tonight, that what do we do when we have those challenges that come to challenge us, that come to trip us up, that, that hinders us from moving forward. One of the things that, that the Lord spoke to me even before I got on the line, he says, that we have to know that he cares about us for real, even now and even in our present situation. And, and one of the things that, that we talked a little bit about yesterday at church is that, that hasn't he already shown how much he cares for us? Come on now, y'all. You know, the, you know, the things that we're going through now and, and the, the issues that we may have and the worries that we have, but hasn't God been good to us? Hasn't he already shown us how much he cares for us, how much he, he loves us, that he would send his only begotten son to hang and die for us, that even when we were in our junk, even when we were in our stuff, that he still sent the best of him because he cared for us even now. You know, when you think about it, that think about this. What, what if there was no opportunity to live differently, where would we be? Where would we be? Because he cared for us, he's given us those options. If, if left to our own accord and on the path we were traveling, where would we be even today? And he waited so patiently for us to turn towards him, knowing that whenever we got a glimpse of him, sooner or later we would, be, we would become disenchanted with what and how we were living. He started by just loving us with all our filthy, filthy rags, and layer by layer he begins to change our garments for the garments of forgiveness, righteousness, and praise. Right there, I right there. Somebody just ought to be thanking God when you when you recall when you recall where you were when 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 you surrendered to Him when He came and got you when He apprehended you out of the hands of the enemy. That 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 it was Him that that continually just gives us another way of living and He equips us with the necessary tools to do so. He gives us the Holy Spirit. He gives us prayer. We have the word, we have church, we have fellowship with other believers, and we have his undisputing love. We can't say he don't love us. Come on now. He loves us with an everlasting love. And because of that, we know that regardless of, of what we may encounter, and this is the thing, you know, we, we say a lot of things, but I'm talking about when it becomes true rhema word, when it's alive in you. See, we have to get past, past the place where we're, quoting and toting a lot of things, but we, we don't have it in our heart. I'm talking about to the place where you know for sure that, that, he, that he loves me. So, therefore, no matter what my day looks like and no matter what I may encompass in my day, that I know my daddy loves me. And, it, and if this thing is here now, it's because there's something that I need to get out of this, but also I need to learn how to work through it by giving it over to him and not carrying it. Now, he's shown us how, how dear we are to him. Over in Psalm 8, verse 4 to 6, it says, What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visiteth him? 
For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. God is mindful of us. Hallelujah. From the very beginning, his, his, his purpose was, was that we would be clothed in, in righteousness and holiness. He says, let us create them in, 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 in our likeness, in our image, and that they will have dominion over the works of our hands. So we were created to have dominion. We were created to walk in the power and the position of the almighty God. So he cares for us, and he's always doing things to get us back to that state or that position that he had decreed and declared for us from the very beginning. Remember over in John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved. Hallelujah. I always love that when he says so loved, not just love, you know, like so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life, that he lets us know that we are just so special to him. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but that's the thing that caused my broken pieces to come back together again. That that was the thing when I realized that how much he loved me, not just love, but so loved me, that he would do that for me. And he kept telling me how special I was and how much he loved me. And finally, finally, it became not words that I was hearing, but it was words where I could live my life by and I could begin to agree with him. And so even tonight, you, you may, sometimes you may feel like, well, God, do you really love me, Lord? Because all that I'm going through, but I want to assure you tonight, but he does. His love is not based on those things that you're going through. His love is based on the fact that he just loves and that no matter what you're going through, God is able to get you through it. But he wants you to cast all your cares upon him because he does indeed care for you. So I just want to remind somebody tonight, but he loves you. He's so loved, you know, and, and, and you know, people, people love, but when you're talking about so love, you go the extra mile when you so love. You know, you do things that you don't normally do. You come out of your comfort zone. You, you don't mind feeling or looking vulnerable in front of someone when you so love them. You, you begin to tap into who they are. You begin to be able to discern what their likes and their dislikes are. You, you're able to, to do that small thing that maybe nobody else knows that they like. You, 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 you're able to meet some needs that they don't even know that they have. But, but see, that's the kind of God that we serve. Hallelujah. That he so loved us that he knows everything about us. He knows the things that we're going through. He knows the things that we're going to go through, and he's already positioned things in place so that we'll be able to get through those things because he's so loved. He's so, he just so loved. So also when we're thinking about what do we do and, and, and remembering that he cares for us, you know, what about those days when what we see, and sometimes we get tripped up by how long it's been or, or, or what we've seen, and matter of fact, sometimes even who it is, it challenges us. It challenges us to let us begin to think about, well, I wonder if God's going to do it. Does God really, is he going to bring me out? Is he going to be able to, to make this thing turn around for, for my good? Over in Romans chapter 8, verse 35 and 38, it says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? For I am persuaded. See, Mm, thank you, Lord. Right there, right there. See, this is the place that we need to park ourselves for. I am persuaded, glory to God, I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So no matter what it looks like, no matter how long it's been, the Bible, hallelujah, tells us that nothing shall separate us from the love of God, that no matter what we're going through, that, 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 that he still loves us and he will still will bring us through, and that, that we have to know that he says, I am persuaded. So we have to get to a place that we are persuaded. You know, it doesn't matter what it looks like. I don't know, matter what you said or even what I think. But I am persuaded that he loves me, that he loves me. Even in, even in my pain, he loves me. 
because some things may cause pain because of what it is or maybe even who it is, but that does not mean that it separates me from the love of Christ, that he still, he still loves me because life is filled of all kinds of situations in life. You know, the Bible says that there's a time for, for life and there's a time for death. It's a time to cry and there's a time to dance. You know, th- that's just life. If you live long enough, you're going to go through different aspects of, of life, but we have to understand that that doesn't negate that God still loves me and that God is able to bring me through. Over in Mark nine twenty seven, it says, And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thy my unbelief. Right here is where there was a, a, a boy who was throwing himself in the fire and cutting himself, and he had been doing this for years. And finally Jesus comes to the town, and, and, the, and the father goes to Jesus, and he says that, uh, can, you, can, you, can you do something for my boy? My boy's been like this for a long time. And he, and, and he says with tears in his eyes, he said, I believe that you can do it. I've heard about all the miracles that you've done. I, I've heard about all the wonderful things that you've done. He said, but, and I believe you can do it. He says, but help my unbelief. And sometimes we may find ourselves there based on the circumstances, based on the length of time that that situation might have been there. It, it, it may be based on who uh, the conflict or who the situation is based on. A lot of times, if it's like for me, my, my boys, if you mess with my boys back in the day, hallelujah, they're grown men, they can kind of fend for themselves. But back in the day, if you mess with my, my boys, you got a fight on your hands. And, I, you know, I stepped to grown men because they bothered my boys because my sons were very close and still are very dear to my, dear to my heart. So there are times when, when you, 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 you have to still give that over to God. So I had to get to a place where if the enemy could not readily get to me, he would, he would try to attack my sons. And so I had to get to a place where I had to surrender them to God. I had to give them over to God. And, and so that the enemy, regardless of what's going on, that I'm going to commit them to God and God's going to take care of them. God's going to take care and God's going to take care of me. He's going to do that because, because he, loved, he loves me. So this is where the man found himself. He says, but I know you can do it, Jesus. I know you can do it. I heard. I saw the miracles. I've seen you raise people from the dead. I've seen all of this. But he kept, he kept having visions in his head of his, of his boy cutting himself and throwing himself in the fire and, and, and he, so in one, one sense, he was seeing what God, Jesus was capable, but he kept going back to what he had experienced. And I'm quite sure that a lot of people had came through town and they said they could heal the boy or they could get rid of demons in his life, but they couldn't do it. So he kept thinking about that, all the people who said they could and they didn't. And he kept saying, I don't know, is it going to be a time like this? So have you ever been in that place where you're like, I know, God, you, I know when you you bless me. You bless me over there, God. I, I know when you, when you, when you took care of that situation. But God, I don't, I don't know this time, God. It, it's been so long, and and and, and God, I don't, I'm not sure, God, whether you're gonna do it for me. Have you ever just been in a place like that? And somebody may be, and I, mm, thank you, Lord. I won't even say somebody may be in that place. Somebody is on this line tonight in that place right there where you're thinking. Well, I don't know. I don't know. It's been it's been a while, Pastor. I I don't know. It seems like I keep going back to this situation, or the situation does not present itself in another light. I don't know whether God's going to do it. You know, is is He going to do it for me? Well, I'm going to tell you tonight. Yeah, he will. Hallelujah. He, yes, He will, because He told you to cast. He's telling us tonight. Cast your cares upon Me, because I care for you. God said that if, if if I sent my son to hang and die for you, I wouldn't t- won't I take care of you now? But you gotta believe me. You gotta believe me to the very end until you see it come to pass. See, some things we just have to deem it to be so. I remember uh, what was it for Mother's Day? Uh, Esther came in. Uh, Pastor Esther came in, and one of the things that she said, she 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 said that. Um, we should pray not from the point of praying for victory, but from the standpoint that we already got the victory. So sometimes you have to just say, but I'm persuaded. Come hell or high water, hook or crook, my God is going to bring me through, and this situation is going to change. So 
I just want to encourage somebody that's in that position tonight that you're thinking about, but it's been five years. It's been maybe six years, and, and nothing looks like it has changed. But what you can say, but you're still standing, ain't you? You're still standing tonight. You're still standing. Although hell has probably tried to come up against you, but you're still standing. God has allowed you to know that even in this, he still remains God. And God is able to keep you because God is able to keep us in every given situation. So you're coming out of this thing. When God moves it, you're going to come out stronger. You're going to come out wiser. You're going to come out there knowing that God is who he say he is. And a lot of times, it's not so much that God will move the situation, but he'll move us in the situation because, because why would God just sometimes move the situation and we haven't learned anything that we need to learn? We've, got, we've not gathered strength from it. We've not gathered wisdom from it. We've not learned how to pray. We've not learned how to be consistent in prayer. We have not learned how to call on the, the, the name of the Almighty God. So there are times when God may not move right away because there's, there's attributes of him, hallelujah. There's his glory that he's trying to reveal to you in the situation. I've seen him do it too many times where I'm like, God, you got to move me, move them, move somebody. He says, no, no, I'm not, because I'm teaching you, Shirley, how to stand in the midst of adversity. I'm teaching you how to stand that no matter what they say, no matter what they do, no matter how they step to you, that you're going to be able to say, not so, not so, and not so. And then when I got to the place that I could say, not so, and not so, then God moves me, because now I'm coming away with some added strength. I'm coming away with something that I know that that will take me from here to glory. So tonight, tonight, be encouraged. It may be five years, but you keep trusting God till you see that thing come to pass. You begin to call it. It says, it says, call those things that be not if they be so. Be so. Call it. Call it. If if you're waiting for God to heal heal your marriage, and God told you that He's going to do it then you keep calling on him until you see that thing come to pass. Now, if God said it, now, hear me, if God said so, if God said this is where you're supposed to be, if God said that job belongs to you, if God said that promotion belongs to you, if God said that belongs to you, then God will bring it to pass. So be encouraged tonight. Don't get caught up in how long it's been. Don't get caught up in how bleak it is, because sometimes just before your blessings come, it look real crazy. Because the enemy is trying to shut you down, trying to move you off of the place of your blessing. But that's when you have to just dig in a little bit hard. As old folks say, they say they they held on to the horns of the altar. That's when you hold on and you don't let go. You say, I am persuaded. Oh, glory to God. I don't care what it looked like. I, I don't care how long it's been, but I am persuaded, God that you're able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you could ever, I could ever ask or think. And, God, you said that you're going to bring me out. And, and God, I know it's been a while, and I'm, I'm getting weary, but, God, you said, you said you're going to bring me out. So I'm going to sit here, God. I'm, I'm going to read my word. I'm, I'm going to rock back and forth if I need be, and I'm going to keep coming to you, God, until you strengthen me in this place. And, and God, I know that at the appointed time that, God, you'll bring me out. That, uh, you'll bring me out to the other side. Oh, God, and it will look like what you say it's going to look like, regardless of what it looks like now. God, you said and you promised me, oh, glory to God, that it will come to pass. Oh, God is a good God, and he's a faithful God. And God wants us to be able to cast our cares upon him before, because he cares for us. And sometimes we gotta be we got to be truthful like the man did. He said, I, I believe you, but help my unbelief. God wants us to be to be truthful with him and that, that, that he letting him know that he that we know that he never loses sight of who we are and where we are. Oh hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was just reminded, thank you Lord. I was just reminded when I was talking about I was talking about my my sons and how I just would give them over to the Lord and and the Lord said that they would be fine and, and even, you know, sometimes, you know, I was thinking about my middle son that passed and and I remember the Lord told me when they were young that they would they would serve him. And my son died when he's 19. Every, you know my story. He died when he was 19. But at his funeral, 21 people stood around the casket and gave their life to the Lord. So so he got his witness. He got a witness even in his death. You know, so sometimes God, God moves, but God always 
Even in life and death, God still keeps his word. God keeps his word. My son's death was not in vain. Somebody else, 21 people, 21 people. That's some, sometimes we live a lifetime and don't, don't have an influence on that many people. So God is faithful. Second Corinthians 5, 7 says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. And sometimes we just, we just got to say, help. God, I need your help. I can't do this. You know, don't, don't, don't walk around sometimes. We act like we have to be these super Christians and act like nothing bothers us. And, and, and we just, oh, God, we got it so together. No, there were many days that I rolled out my bed at night. God, I, I don't, God, I don't know. I don't know, God. I don't know. I don't know. Help me, God. I don't know. I can't do this. But I had to be truthful with God, and that's where my help comes in, talking about casting our cares upon him. We have to understand that he understands us, and he knows everything about us, and everything that we will ever encounter has already been appropriated for and is keeping power and provisions have already been given. Over in Ephesians 1, 4, and 6, it says, According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glory, of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. He knows me. Before the foundation of the world, he knew me, and he knew what he was calling for my life. And it says that according to his good pleasure of his will, that God is calling us to himself so that we can be all that he has called us to be. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 and 16 says, For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. It says that we have a high priest that, that, that cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Jesus walked the earth as a man. He was... He was Christ, but he was a man. So he, he understands the things that, that, that we go through. He understands the, the, the temperaments, and he understands the slander. He understands the, the things that people will do to us. He understands the hurts. He understands the, the fears, the insecurities. He, he understands all that, and that's why when he hung on the cross and he said, he said it was finished, he said it was finished, he said it was finished, then he took all that on him so that, that whenever we hit those places in our lives, that we can say it's finished too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we don't have to worry about that because he says, come boldly into the throne of grace. We don't have to carry the things that we're carrying. It says, come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. You don't have to worry about that situation. You don't have to worry about it. Come boldly to the throne of grace. Tell God about it. Talk to God about it. God, I can't do this. I don't know what to do. There were days when I would come and God, I don't even know what to ask you anymore, God. I, I ran out of words. I, I, I don't know what to say. The situation has not changed. I, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. But I do know that I need to stay here. I need to come every day and just, just get before you. I don't have no words for you today, God. But then those days when I didn't have words for him, he had words for me. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. He had words for me. He had words to let me know, baby, I know you can't do it, but I got you, and I can do it, and there's nothing that you're experiencing that I can't bring you out of. I can bind up your broken heart. I can put the pieces back together. I can restore your joy. I can give you a place to bomb in Gilead. I can, I can, I can, I can do that. And so tonight, don't, don't feel like, you know, people, be, people tell you, oh, by now you should have got over, over that. By now, why, I thought you was a believer. I, why are you all worried about stuff? Tell them, go sit down. Go sit down. And you get before God, however long it takes, until you see the manifestation, until you get the release that you need to be able to walk in the places that God has called you to be. Matthew 19, 26, it says, 
But Jesus beheld them, and he said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things. Oh, glory to God. All things are possible. He didn't say these things. He didn't have a list. I'm so glad he didn't have a list because <laughs> that means that, that whatever it seems impossible to me, whether it's big or small, he says that nothing is impossible for him. Whatever is impossible with men, but it's all with God, all things are possible. So when it looks impossible for me, guess what? That means that God got this thing. God, God can work it out. You know, God can work out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, God can, God can work out whatever he chooses to work out. He has so many things at his disposal. God can, can, can create things. God can call things. God can deem things. God can shut things down. God can open things up. God can, he can do whatever he wants to do. He has so many more resources at the tip of his finger, at the, the tip of his voice. Remember in the beginning he said, let there be. That's all he said was, let there be. And when he spoke, the world came into existence. So imagine when we're going through, he could just say, let there be. And everything that is connected to being in my life will come together and produce what I need. So it's nothing impossible for God. I always say, Lord, I don't know. This, this, this seems like a real good one for you. I'm going to see how you're going to do this. I, I want to see how you're working out. And I get a chance to see his glory, his magnificence, his miracles, his presence in the things that I can't do, but I know that my father can do it. Also, talking about casting our cares upon him. We have to understand that when we're going through that even this, even this, regardless of what even this is, that it will work out for my good. Psalm 138.8 says, The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever, forever. Forsake not the works of thy own hands. We are created by God. We are created for his pleasure and for his purpose. It says that his mercy endureth forever, forever. You know, folks, you know, you, folks will give you some things, you know, for a period of time, then they get kind of tired or uh, their resources are depleted. But hallelujah, with God, it says his mercies endure forever. So God is never lost for an answer. God is never lost for a way. God is never lost for, for provisions. He's never lost for power and might and authority and joy and, and peace and everything that we need. He's never exhausted by that, that he's able to continually give that to us. Romans eight twenty eight says, and we all know this one, and we know that all things, hallelujah, work together for, for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Once again, that all things, I love that all things, all things, all things work together for the good. God can take that thing that looked crazy to somebody tonight, that it looks crazy to you. You'd be like, there's no way nothing good can come out of that. But let me tell you, God can breathe upon that thing regardless of how crazy it may look tonight, but you can wake up in the morning and that thing has just flipped and became something else beautiful that works in your behalf. There's no way that that job, that job just drives me crazy and the people are crazy. And, uh, 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 but you're learning some things that will help you get to the next place of your journey. Because why? He said that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Even this pain will produce something in me. I've had pain in situations, but that pain has produced my knowing that God loves me. That pain has given me compassion for other people who are going through that same situation that God has brought me through. That pain has kept me in the face of God. That pain has taught me how to pray. That pain has taught me how to worship. That pain has taught me that he loves me with an everlasting love, even in that. Because why? He said that all things, oh, glory to God, all things work together for the good. Over in Job 42, 12, it says, So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. And we all know Job, Job went through. Job went through from the very, he lost his kids, he lost all his livestock. His wife said, why don't you just curse God and die? His three friends, they were, he said, you're 
what is it? He talks about them as a being a poor, uh, uh, of no good physicians, or something like that. When he, he he calls them, and 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 but at the end, at the end, when Job, when God began to to talk to Job and explain to Job who he was, Job said, "But but I have I have heard you with the hearing of the ear." He said, "But now my eyes see you, and I hoard myself in dust and ashes." Because now Job's got a better picture of him. See, when, you, when you're going through some things and, and God allows you to go through it, you're able to see him in a whole nother ram, in a whole nother way, in a whole nother light. You're able to say, regardless of what I thought you were, but now I'm seeing you in another dimension. See, some things, those hard places, they take you into a, a whole nother dimension. One of the things that we have to remember also that he, he will navigate us through because he is always with us. Remember it over in Hebrews 13, 5, it says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. We have to understand that, that over in John 16, 33, yes, yeah, thank you, Lord. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye may have peace in the world. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. That's our assurance tonight. That regardless of what we're going through, he says, be of, of good cheer. He says, be of good cheer. He says, peace I leave unto you. Peace I leave unto you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives, I give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Be of good cheer, because I have overcome the world. He's overcome the world, so nothing, guys, that we're going through. It's nothing that God can't bring us through. He says, come on, cast it on me, give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me, and I'll bring you through. One thing that I want to I say, too, is tonight that, that miracles are embedded in the hard places that make you privy to. Hear me now. Hear me. Miracles are embedded in the hard places that you are privy to. There are times when you're going through some hard places, and God shows up. He shows up in such a way that you cannot declare, you have to declare that that ain't nobody but God. People used to look at me and they wonder, why are you always over there singing in your house? And don't you know your husband left you and, and, and you got the kids you got to take care of and you don't hardly got no money and you don't even have a job right now. But I hear you in the kitchen praying and singing. But see, they didn't understand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, that my, my situation looked bleak, but I had a witness inside of me that my God told me that he was giving me a new life, that my God told me that he would take care of me, that I've seen him come through that house. I've seen him when, when I didn't know how I was going to feed my babies, but I've seen God provide. See, we have to understand in those hard places, miracles show up, and sometimes God is setting you up for a miracle. Somebody on the line right on, on this broadcast tonight, God is setting you up for a miracle. The hard places. I'm going to tell you this story real quick, and then I'm going I'm to I'm close off the message. I met this lady I shared with the church. I met this lady about two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Actually, it was June 10th. It was actually on my birthday. And I was out. I don't normally go out like that, but I was supposed to go out with my young, oldest, youngest son, and something happened where they had to take care of some business. And so I said, well, you know, I'll just run out and get me a pair of shoes. It was just on me in my spirit. Go out, just go out. I got dressed at 7 o'clock. I don't be doing that on a Saturday. I got to preach the next day, but it was my birthday. So I go out, I get dressed, I go over to buy me some shoes, and when I'm out there, I hear all this music playing, and they have this concert going on, music out there, a band and people singing. I was like, oh, okay, I didn't know they was doing this over here, so I'm a big girl, so I said, okay, I'm going to hang out. I'm going to hang out with the folks at the concert. So I'm outside at the concert, and, and this lady comes and sits next to me. And uh, so I said, oh, I said, are they doing this now? She says, well, I don't know. I just moved here a week ago. Long story short, this woman sits there beside me, and she begins to tell me that she moved in these apartments not far from where we were both sitting at. And she said, I moved here because it's in between where my sons live, she said, uh, I had been sick, and I just needed a fresh start. I lost a lot of weight and since I've been ill. She says, I was in my house. I came from an event, and I was in my house, and I walked in the door, 
and I, I fell out. So I was in my house for a week. A week, hear me now. I was in my house for a week, in and out of consciousness, and finally my son, one of my sons says, has anybody talked to mom? And they said, no. He said, well, I'm going over to the house. When they got to the house, they found, he found her on the floor, but they found the dog right next to her. The dog had actually laid on top of her to try to keep her body heat up so that she wouldn't die. There was his, he dragged his water, he dragged his water bowl that was next to her, and he was trying to, to at least splash some water on her. Also, his, her hair was, she had long hair. She said her hair was in knots because the, the dog was trying to grab, drag her by her hair to get her where she can actually get some help. Don't tell me what God don't. For five days, she lost, I forgot, 20, 30, 50, a whole bunch of weight in a week because she didn't eat, because she was in and out of consciousness. But God had that dog there. God had that dog to lay on her to keep her body heat up, also to at least splash water on her so she could come up a little bit, and then they were able to take her to the hospital, and there was something that was going on in her brain that caused this to happen. And so she began to share that, and I said, well, you know, I said, I said, that's nothing but a miracle that you're alive. And she said, yeah. She says, I know, that, you know, God has something for me. I said, yeah, he definitely has something for you. And, and, and I told her, I said, this is my birthday. And she said, oh, wow, she says, happy birthday. And she says, I've been only living here like a week, and you're the first person, adult, that I've had adult conversation with. And she, she stood up. She says, can I give you a hug? She says, thank you for coming out this evening. Thank you that I've had somebody to talk to and to share with. Oh, glory to God. Don't tell me what God won't do. That blessed me because I was led to go out the time that I went. If I had to went earlier, if I had to went with my son, I would have missed this lady. The lady wouldn't have a chance to sit with somebody to be able to talk to that she didn't know anybody in this neighborhood. But we're talking about she shared her story. Miracles, miracles are embedded in the hard places with God. So somebody take that story right there that you may be going through a hard place, but God's about to show you, hallelujah, hallelujah. God's about to show you who he is. God's about to reveal his glory. God's about to, to show you a miracle. God's about to do something in your situation that you know that nobody could have done that but the almighty God. God said, cast your care. Come on, give it to me. Dismiss it, toss it, hurl it. Give it to me because I care it's for you. So be encouraged tonight where it may look like a long time, it seems like a long time, but God is setting you up for a miracle. God is setting you up so that you can see his glory. God is setting you up so you'll know that God loves you with an everlasting love. Oh, hallelujah. 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 God says that when we cast our cares upon him, he said, you get a chance to see my glory, you get my favor, you get my provisions, you get my power, you get my presence, you get my peace, you get my joy, you get my wisdom, you get my strength. He says, that's who I am, and I care it for you. Oh, glory to God. Oh, he's a good God, and he's a faithful God. He wanted us to know that tonight, but there's nothing that we're going through that God can't bring us through. There's nothing, nothing nothing that God that we're going through that God can't bring us through. So this is what I want you guys to do in this upcoming week. I want you to, to just stay before God and, and abandon anything that has become a weight, even you being a weight to yourself. Because, you know, sometimes we can, we can hinder our own stuff, just our thought pattern, how we think about stuff. But let us, let us just give ourselves over to God and leave those things that are, have become weighty and be determined, hallelujah, and be persuaded that we're not going to pick it up again and the strength and, and to know that, that, that everything that God has for us, it shall come to pass. I want you to do that. That's your assignment. I love giving assignments. I want you to just stay before God this week. Think about those things. You know what they are. Nobody got to tell you what those things that you wrestle with, the things that you're losing sleep over, those things that you wonder whether God's going to do it, what he's going to do it. But I want you to relinquish those things to God tonight. This week, get before God. God, I just give you back my children, God. I give you back my marriage, God. I give you back my job, God. I give you back my health, oh, God. 
I give you back that relationship, God. I give you back my finances, God. Whatever it may be that's weighing you down, because you you have you have been created for purpose and destiny, and those things come to challenge us. But God said, give them to me, so that you can reap the benefits, so that you can can be all that I called you to be. So be encouraged tonight. Be encouraged tonight. Somebody somebody about to get a miracle. Somebody about to. And see, see the miracle happen in your life because of the things that have been going on in your life. He's just setting you up because he loves you. I love you, and God loves you, and God's been good to me, and God has, will be good to you and continually be good to you because he's already shown himself mighty, he's already shown himself loving, and he's already shown himself kind. So be encouraged tonight because why? Because he cares for you. So, Father God, we just thank you tonight. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, 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 Lord God. We thank you. God, we bless you and we honor you, Lord God, and we give you praise and we give you thanksgiving and we give you glory, God. We thank you for your loving kindness. God, we thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing, God. We thank you for your love, God. We thank you for your favor, your glory, your provisions, your power, your presence, your peace your joy, your wisdom, and your strength. God, we thank you for who you are tonight. And I just pray tonight, oh God, that you would just continually bless these, your people, who have pressed their way on the line tonight. I pray that, God, that, 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 that those ones that are, have got on the line, God, and they were weighted down. But I pray, God, that they will understand tonight that they can cast their cares upon you because you care for them and that you have so many ways of working that thing out that you're just setting them up for a miracle. You're setting them up to see your glory. Oh, hallelujah. You're setting them up, oh, God. Let them rest in that. Let them give it over to you and not pick it up. Be persuaded and be determined that you are who you say you are. So, God, we thank you tonight. God, we bless you and we honor you, and we give you praise, and we give you thanksgiving, and we give you glory, and nothing is too hard for you because you're God Almighty. Bless these, your people. Bless every family that's represented on this broadcast tonight. I pray, God, blessings upon them. I pray that, God, that you would meet every need, and, God, that they will know to cast it. Cast it, not to wear it, not to carry it, but to cast it upon you who cares for them, who cares for us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen, and amen. Oh, he's a good God. Faithful God who just cares so much for us tonight. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask Reverend Ray, is there anything for me tonight, sir? Um, No, ma'am. Amen, amen. So we're going to, I'm going to just say, uh, for those, anybody who's on the line tonight that, that has not asked Jesus Christ to be your personal Savior, your Lord and Savior, to come and take your life over, and so you're at a point where, you know, I, I, I can't do this. And so we're talking about casting it, but you can't cast who you don't know. You got to know him to cast it. And so I, I just want to extend the call to salvation tonight for those that may be on the line that does not know him as your personal Savior, and that if you could just repeat after me, um, and, and, and we're going to ask God to just take your life and cause it to be what he would have it to be, to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So just repeat after me. Lord God, I ask that you would just, just take my life and, and make it what you would have it to be. I understand that I am a sinner, and I ask for forgiveness for the things that I've done. And I ask that, that you would take my life. I, I understand about Jesus tonight like I've never understood before. And I ask that you would continually make that real to me, that I can cast my cares, so that I no longer have to carry it. And I ask that you would take my life and make it be what you want it to be. And I ask you to do it tonight. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And I pray for that person or persons who have prayed that. I pray that, God, that you would endow them and and that you would teach them and give them everything that they need, that your spirit and your presence would be upon their lives from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So if you were on the line tonight and you were one of the people uh, that that, uh, prayed the sinner's prayer and asked Jesus to take your life over, I ask that you would uh, send me an email or you can call and, and let me know because there are some materials that I'd like to ship out to you uh, just to help you on your journey uh, from this day, this day forward, and I'm just excited about it. And if you're on the line and this message was indeed for you, that it, it, it touched something, it, 
it encouraged you, then, you know, send me an email. I want to I hear from you guys. You know, I want to hear what God is doing uh, in your life. And so I ask that you would just uh, continually just join me. I want to thank you first for joining me tonight on the broadcast and remember to join me the first Monday of each month and let others know about the broadcast as well. And uh, you can listen to uh, this message again probably in about another half an hour or so if you go to When Christians Speak. Uh, there's a podcast that you can hook into and you can hear the message and you can let other people know as well that if this is something that bless you, that hopefully they will bless somebody else. So I just want to close this out in prayer. I pray that everybody enjoy the 4th of July, the holiday on tomorrow. Be safe. Uh, spend some time with your family. Have some quiet time. Eat good. And, and just enjoy your day. But don't forget who you are. You belong to God. You belong to God. You belong to God and that you can cast your cares upon him. So, Father, we just thank you, and we bless you, and we honor you, Lord God, for all that you've done even tonight and all that you've said, that you care for us, and that, God, that we don't have to carry it, we don't have to walk around with it, we don't have to worry about how it's going to get done, but we can just give it over to you. So I pray tonight, God, bless these, your people, let this word become rhema. God, let it not just be a word that they hear, but they can walk in it and live in it and be it from this day forward. So, God, we thank you tonight, and we bless you, and we honor you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, and amen, and amen. So, love you guys. Now, you know, I'm asking that you hold for the final words, and I just want to let you know that I love you guys and look forward to getting back together with you uh, the first Monday of next month. Love you guys, and know that he careth for you. Good night. We thank you for joining us on the Lifeline Broadcast, and pray you've been blessed. Again, our church is Rehoboth Family Life Center, located at 17900 Queen Anne Road, Upper Marlboro, Maryland, 20774. Apostle Jones would love to hear from you. She can be reached via Apostle S. Jones at rehobothflc.org or by dialing one 354 6082. Until next month's broadcast, good evening and God bless. You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. Join us for our weekly broadcast, His Abounding Grace, with Minister Vanessa Williams. That's every Tuesday at 7 p.m. On Wednesday afternoons at 1 p.m., join Reverend Gwendolyn Dixon for the Midday Glory Prayer Line. The dial-in number is 641-715-3580. The access code is 732-499. And Wednesday nights at 7 p.m., Challenge to Change, where real transformation begins with you. That's with Pastor Paul Morgan of Chosen Generation Ministries in Richmond, Virginia. On Thursdays, live at 12 noon, join Rev. Pat Randall for Declaring the Finished Work for an hour of worship, exhortation, and prayer. Rev. Ray and friends are here on Friday nights at 7 p.m. with the joy of the Lord on Friday Night Joy. Sundays at 7 p.m., join Rev. Ray for Bread of Life for a Word in Season. And don't forget our monthly broadcast. First Mondays of every month at 7 p.m., be blessed with the teaching ministry of Apostle Shirley Jones on Lifeline. On third Mondays at 7 p.m., join Evangelist Louis McElwain for Adoration, a broadcast of worship and ministries on the mission field. Second Saturdays of the month, join Rev. Curtis, Rev. Novena, and Minister Jordana for Bold and Beautiful, a youth and young adult broadcast setting the world on fire with the love of Jesus. 
and on fourth Saturdays, Alabaster Box at 7 p.m. with Prophetess Carla Johnson, where she shares a broad range of topics to help believers persevere and overcome. All broadcast times are Eastern Standard Time. When Christian Speak Talk Radio is a non-profit ministry, we are dedicated to spreading the gospel of Jesus through our programs and special guests. We exist through the generous support of our listeners. If you are being blessed through this ministry and would like to give a love offering, go to our website and click on our donation page. Your donation will be processed through PayPal. Our prayer is that you may prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Unto the Lord, for He is good, yes, He is good. When Christian Speak Talk Radio is a 501c3 nonprofit ministry, so all of your gifts to this ministry are tax deductible. So go out to our website, www.whenchristianspeak.com. Dot com and click on our donation page. Listen to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio on Blog Talk Radio, iHeart Radio, Speaker.com. All of our broadcasts are available as podcasts through SoundCloud, YouTube, iTunes, Blueberry.com, Zoom.com, Stitcher.com, Lisbon.com, and BlogTalkRadio.com. To listen to our broadcast by phone, dial 646-478-0660. Again, that number is 646-478-0660. Go visit and like our Facebook page, When Christians Speak Talk Radio. Also be sure to check out Christians Against Suicide and Depression. It's a page dedicated to sharing God's love, encouragement, and hope. There are prayer warriors standing by to receive prayer requests, doing intercession for those under attack by the lie and deception of the devil. We know that the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. But praise God, Jesus came to set the captives free. 